This week, we are going to start talking about algorithms on directed graphs. A key role is going to be played by directed graphs that have no directed cycle. These are called directed acyclic graphs, or DAGs for short. In a DAG, we will look at the problem of finding a so-called topological sort of the vertices. OK, let's get into it and see what a topological sort is and why you would want to find one. So far, in talking about algorithms on graphs, we have focused on undirected graphs. Today, we'll be all about directed graphs. Directed graphs arise in many applications, where you not, not only want to express a relationship between two things, but where this relationship also has an order. For example, if we want to represent a road network as a graph, we would probably need to use a directed graph, because a street can be a one-way street. Here's an example of some streets around UTS. You can drive from Broadway and Waddle to Waddle and Thomas, but not the other way around because this is a one-way street. So we indicate this with a directed edge from Broadway and Waddle to Waddle and Thomas. Another example we mentioned before is a graph of exchange rates. The, exchange, the rate for changing Bitcoin into Ethereum is different from the rate for changing Ethereum into Bitcoin. So we can represent this by a weighted and directed graph. The first algorithm that we're going to talk about today has a natural application to the problem of job scheduling. Imagine a graph where the vertices are labeled by tasks that need to be done. If task A has to be done before task B, then we put an edge in the graph directed from task A to task B. So for example, in getting dressed, Tasks you may have to do include putting on trousers, socks, and shoes. You have to put on socks before shoes, so we put a directed edge from socks to shoes. Likewise, there is a directed edge from trousers to shoes. But you can put on your socks before your trousers or vice versa, so there is no edge between trousers and socks. In this way, the graph represents precedence constraints between the tasks to be done. Here is another example representing prere prerequisite constraints in the software engineering major at UTS. You have to take programming fundamentals before applications programming, and you have to take applications programming before taking our course, data structures and algorithms. You also, for example, have to take applications programming before software architecture or before introduction to game development. When faced with a graph like this, you may ask yourself, how can I graduate? In other words, what is an order in which I can take these classes that respects all the prerequisite constraints? Such an ordering is known as a topological order. A topological order of the vertices is an ordering of all the vertices. So you want to say this vertex is first, that one is second, that, that this other one is third, etc. And if there are n vertices, you want to assign them the numbers 1 to n, using each number once, so that for every edge from u to v in the graph, the number labeling u is smaller than the number labeling v. So for every di directed edge from u to v in the graph, the number labeling u should be smaller than the number labeling v. So let's go back to our simple getting dressed example where we have the tasks of putting on your trousers, putting on your socks, and putting on your shoes. So here's one possible topological sort in this example. We can first put on our trousers, then put on our socks, and third, put on our shoes. You see that when we place the vertices on a horizontal line in topological order, then all edges go from left to right. You cannot have an edge going from right to left. There can be more than one topological ordering in a graph. We can, put a, we can put our socks and trousers on in any order. So we can also first put on socks, then put on trousers second, and put on shoes third. This is another topological order of the graph. A topological order does, is not necessarily unique. We can see that again in our prerequisite graph in the software engineering major. 
I've given one topological sort here going from left to right and top to bottom. But there are many possible topological orders here. In particular, there's a lot of freedom in the placement of introduction to information systems, course number 31269, which I have placed on the far right of the top row. You can actually place this course anywhere as long as it goes before business requirements modeling uh, the, in the bottom row at the far right. <clears throat> so now we come to the first question about a topological order. When does it exist? Can we give a topological order to the vertices of any directed graph? Can you think of anything that might prevent a graph from having a topological order? So let's look at go back to our prerequisite example. And now imagine that UTS decided that advanced game programming should also be a prerequisite for programming fundamentals. So we add an edge, this red edge here in our prerequisite graph from advanced game programming to programming fundamentals. You see that this creates a directed cycle in the prerequisite graph. And I've shown the edges of that cycle in red. So we cannot get started on taking any of the courses on the cycle, right? What could we start with? We can no longer start with programming fundamentals because this requires advanced game programming, but we can't start with advanced game programming because this requires data structures and algorithms. We can't start with data structures and algorithms because that requires applications programming. And we can't start with applications programming because this requires programming fundamentals. And now we're back to the beginning. So in this case, there's actually no order in which you can take these courses and respect the prerequisite constraints. There's no topological ordering of this graph. From this example, we see that a graph with a directed cycle cannot have a topological order. So this motivates the study of directed graphs that do not have any directed cycles. So such a graph is called a directed acyclic graph, acyclic meaning that it doesn't have any cycles. Usually we call a directed acyclic graph a DAG after its acronym. So I want to emphasize that a directed cycle has to respect the orientation of the edges. A directed cycle is a way to walk on the graph from a vertex back to that same vertex where you can only walk from vertex U to vertex V if there is an edge directed from U to V. So this example graph here on three vertices is a DAG. It has no directed cycles. There is no edge going out of vertex C, so vertex C cannot be a part of a directed cycle. And also there's no edge going into A, so A also cannot be part of a directed cycle. Remember that graphs without a cycle also play an important role in undirected graphs. A tree is exactly a connected graph with no cycle. In general, an undirected graph without a cycle is going to be a disjoint, disjoint union of trees, which is also called a forest. This means that undirected graphs without cycles must be sparse. They cannot have a lot of edges. In fact, an undirected graph without a cycle will always have at most n minus one edges, which is realized by a tree. The situation is quite different with a DAG. Consider this directed graph here, which has a directed edge from every vertex on the left to every vertex on the right. It has no directed cycle because every edge starts on the left and ends on the right. In general, this kind of graph on n vertices with n over two vertices on the left and n over two vertices on the right will have n squared over four edges. So it can actually be quite dense. Okay, let's go back to talking about topological order. It turns out that having a directed cycle is the only obstruction that prevents a graph from having a topological order. A directed graph has a topological order if and only if it is a DAG. We have already seen that a graph with a directed cycle cannot have a topological order. So I need to tell you why a DAG always has a topological order. We are actually going to do this via an algorithm. So today I'm going to show you an algorithm that given a DAG actually outputs a topological order. And this algorithm is just going to be a simple modification of depth-first search. 
So this will show that a topological order always exists in a DAG. So this fact shows that topological order is very closely related to directed cycles. If the graph has a directed cycle, we won't be able to find a topological order. So we're actually going to start out with this algorithmic problem. Given a directed graph, does it contain a directed cycle? So as I mentioned, this problem is very closely related to the problem of finding a topological order. And we're going to look at this problem first. Once we understand how to detect a directed cycle, we will also have the knowledge to find a topological order. In case the input graph is not a DAG, our algorithm for detecting a cycle will actually output a directed cycle. So in this way, the algorithm certifies that the given graph is not a DAG. So note that to certify that a graph is not a DAG, it suffices to just find one directed cycle. We actually cannot efficiently find all the directed cycles in a graph because there can be exponentially many of them. In this example graph here, we have one step and two step edges directed from left to right. So the blue edges go from a vertex directly to the next vertex. The red edges uh, go from a vertex, they skip a vertex, and they go to the second vertex away to the right. And we also have one edge directed from the last vertex on the right back to the beginning. The number of paths from the first vertex on the left to the last vertex on the right in this graph is actually given by the Fibonacci numbers when you look at this graph on n vertices. So thus the number of cycles in this graph is going to be exponential in the number of vertices.